1945. The end of the infamous Second World War. The evil Axis powers they defeated. There was no longer an enemy. Yet in the eyes of the superpowers of America and Russia, tensions are rising. As Russia develops its first nuclear bombs, American leaders begin to worry. Russia isn't a trusted ally. As World War II comes to a close, the Allies and Russia have diverging opinions on how European borders look like. The tensions that it's instituted the Cold War began in the United States and Britain were fearful of the Soviet Union dominating Eastern Europe. The United States are fearful of the spread of communism in the Eastern European region. 1947, the start of the Cold War. One by one, the countries turned to communism. First, Albania, then Bulgaria. Czechoslovak, then Germany, and Hungary. During these times, the spread of communism stayed within eastern borders. But when Cuba, a close neighbor to the U.S. led under the corrupt leader Fidel Castro, turned to communism, it was too much. America decided that the spread must be contained. JFK, the then leader of America, formulated a plot to take down Castro and its communism infection. And so began the Bay of Pigs. JFK knew that in order to take out the spread of communism in Cuba, an invasion was needed. He planned an attack on Cuban soil. He decided the first action to be taken was to remove Castro's air support. The Americans flew B-26s and attempted to bomb the Cuban planes, but failed. The Cubans were tipped off. The Americans had planned a secret attack. Everything about it was to be as secret as possible. The troops they sent in were too little, yet the Cubans had known the whole time. All this would lead to its inevitable failure. The fire that sparked from the planning only grew larger when the Cuban exile invasion force landed at the Bay of Pigs. They immediately started to shoot. The force started to sink ships and destroy exile air support. Bad weather started hurting ground forces and there was a lack of ammunition and equipment. It was getting ruined. Nothing was going the Americans' way. Castro became aware of these invasions and within a day, thousands of Castro-ordered cute troops arrived at the Bay of Pigs. Cuban plans dominated the skies. JFK knew he had to do something about this. JFK sent six fighter planes to the Bay of Pigs in retaliation. The backup planes were late by an hour and got shot down quickly by the Cuban forces. During the Bay of Pigs, the Americans thought Castro was too big of a threat to be kept alive. There were attempts to assassinate Castro. All the attempts ended the same way. Failure. America was weak. The reaction from America about the loss was more positive than other countries. The American public had a more patriotic view of the invasion than other countries. On the other hand, other countries were shocked about America's failure of the invasion. America was supposed to be powerful, and they were supposed to be strong, yet the system, capitalism, couldn't even succeed in an invasion against tiny Cuba. The failure of an invasion bolstered Russia's view on JFK, and thought his leadership was weak. Russia still worried about another invasion, though. East Berlin and West Berlin were split. East Berlin was Soviet-controlled, while West Berlin wasn't. The people on the west side enjoyed particularly lavish lifestyles, while their eastern counterparts lived more humbler ones. The Easterners, tired of their poorer lifestyles, decided to move to the western side. Masses traveled to the western capitalist controlled Germany. Soon, Russia grew tired. They set up a wall, taking advantage of America's failure in the Bay of Pigs. They knew that America wouldn't do anything about a wall dividing Germany, and so they did. They set up a wall with barbed wire and security personnel, and they were right. America did nothing, literally nothing. Millions of Germans suffered the communism lifestyle was, while America wasn't able to stop it. 1962 A U-2 spy plane secretly photographed nuclear missile sites being built by the USSR in Cuba. JFK knew that he needed to keep this a secret. 
He didn't want the Soviets in Cuba to know the discovery. JFK met secretly with his advisors to discuss the problem. After many meetings, Kennedy offered a ring of uh, ships to be placed around Cuba. The motive was to stop the Soviets from importing military supplies. Yet the idea of keeping the plan secret was no longer. Amer the Americans quarantined the Cubans and prevented the ships from moving in and out. JFK also discussed a plan to send a bomber squadron to take out all the missile sites, but that was overruled. The then leader of Russia, Khrushchev, unexpectedly calls out the Americans for their quarantine as an act of aggression. After many unarmed ships were denied entry to Cuba, the Kremlin was furious. America's leader saw no end in sight to the crisis. The issue at hand was serious. Nuclear missiles were sitting only a few hundred miles away from America, ready to shoot at a moment's notice. America was scared. The Pentagon went to DEFCON 2, making history. It was the first time in the world that we had ever gone to that. At DEFCON 5, there's world peace. DEFCON 2 is a preparation of DEFCON 1, which is all out nuclear warfare. The world sat on edge, wondering what would happen. And on October 22, 1962, Kennedy spoke about the missile sites. He states, I call upon Chairman Khrushchev to halt and eliminate the clandestine, reckless, and provocative threat to the world peace and stable relations between our two nations. No one really had any idea how Nikita Khrushchev would react to Kennedy's statement. Even though tensions were enormous, America and Russia still sent letter, letter, letters to each other. On October 26, 1962, Nikita Khrushchev sent a letter to the United States offering a removal of missiles in exchange for the U.S. not invading Cuba a second time. Also, on the following day, Khrushchev sent a letter offering that the USSR would dismantle its missiles in Cuba if the Americans removed their missile installations in Turkey. Kennedy officially accepted the first letter, and ignored the second. America also secretly removed their installations in Turkey. Robert Kennedy delivered his message to the Soviet ambassador on Washington. On October 28th, the crisis came to an end. The closest the world has ever gotten to all-out nuclear warfare was over. The world sighed a breath of relief. In conclusion, the Bay of Pigs is a small event that caused big things. It caused the construction of the Berlin Wall. The Russians have felt that America was too weak enough for the wall to be built without consequences. They were right. And, and the Cuban Missile Crisis. This, they felt confident enough to plant nukes only a few hundred miles away from American homeland, and without negative consequences. And they were right. It wasn't the biggest event, but it caused so many events relevant today. Take away the cause, and the effect ceases. Miguel de Cervantes. The Bay of Pigs was a failure. It showed the world that America and capitalism was faltering.